Hello and welcome to the Women's Football Show here today from Orium, where we have been speaking to Caroline Weir. Alison, great for the Scotland squad that she's back in it. What did you make of her uh, chat today? Yeah, I think it's fantastic news for Pedro Martinez Losa that he has a player of Caroline Weir's quality available to him now for these very crucial playoff games. Uh, I think there's a real argument to say that Caroline Weir is definitely in world-class brackets, certainly a player that Scotland have badly missed when she was out. And that's no disrespect to people who come in, who have worked very hard for the team. And I think you, you've seen across recent months a bit of stability within that team. But I, I think there would be an acceptance uh, and, and a real consensus across the board that what Caroline Weir brings is something that no other Scotland player offers. I think you saw a hint of it in the Champions League last week, that goal against Celtic, just a beautiful, beautiful left foot strike, just opened up her body, that arched 25-yard effort. And I think that's what Caroline Weir gives you. And I think for, for these games, where Scotland are, as you look to get back to a, a major European tournament, I think what she offers now is invaluable. And do you think, even in terms of, from a football point of view, she's crucial, but in terms of trying to grow the game and the young girls coming, do you think having such a figurehead like Caroline back in the squad is a good thing as well? Yeah, I, I think it goes without saying that you have a player playing for Real Madrid. It's very attractive to anyone who's up and coming. I think uh, the name Real Madrid speaks volumes. I think it carries a weight. And we would know, Cara, that, that Real Madrid in the women's game might not have the same prestige and, and the same value almost as their male counterparts. I think Barcelona would be a good bit ahead of them in the women's game. But they're a formidable formidable outfit and I think to have a Scottish player playing for Real Madrid reflects very very well on the Scottish game I think it it shows you what is achievable I think across the last decade we have seen changes and opportunities within the women's game open up in a way that I think many of us probably wouldn't have envisaged I think it's fantastic to have a player out flying the flag for Scotland playing in the against the cream of European players week in, week out and, and I think for any up and coming player that, that's attractive, that pathway is very attractive but also I think what you do have is a player then within Scotland ranks who's going and competing at the higher end of football on a consistent basis and that has got to be to the benefit of the national team. Absolutely, well Caroline Weir was out missing with an ACL injury but she says that she's ready to play for her country again. It was tough, yeah, it, I mean I've said it before but it was by far the toughest thing I've had to go through my career um there were so many ups and downs it definitely wasn't a simple journey to recovery um but parts of it I enjoyed you know I kind of enjoyed that challenge I'd you know been lucky that I'd never been injured before and I was proud of the way I dealt with it most of the time um but yeah these things happen it's part of sport so yeah I I feel grateful and I feel really happy to be back yeah, I mean, she's clearly crucial for Pedro Martinez Loza. She was still involved. How important do you think that relationship with that she's got with him has been in terms of getting her back in as quickly as possible as well? Yeah, I think it has been important. I think uh, he was very supportive when she was coming back from the injury. He's from Madrid. Uh, so I think he flies back and forth fairly regularly to see family. So I think he was in constant contact with her. I think... Um, Obviously, in the very challenging early weeks of recovery, I think he spoke to her. I think uh, every press conference almost that we've been at, there's been an update on how she's getting on. I think um, there has been some managerial chat and support. And I think also there was an element of support uh, in that someone you know is going through something very, very difficult. Um, he invited her to camps. He brought her when she was... But in the latter stages of her recovery, he invited her to camps. He brought her into games, and I think that's very important. I think she is a real figurehead within this team and within this squad, and I think making sure she felt part of it was clever. I think uh, it, it's important management. I think she, it's not as though she's been away for a year with an injury and life has gone on without her and she's been forgotten about. I think she's very much been still part of the chat, and I think it, the same goes for Emma Watson too. Very simple, the same injury at a very similar time. I think there's only days between the two of them having the same injury. Emma Watson, obviously a good bit younger. I think she'd be a decade younger than, than Caroline, but equally tough to come back from. Arguably all the more so as a very young player. She'd just gone down to Manchester United. She's a player that will be, I think, very important to Scotland across the coming seasons and across the coming years. Maybe just not quite 
at the, the same level of status that Caroline would have as an established first-team senior player within this squad. But I think keeping them both involved, keeping contact with them, I think it's been very important. And I think they're, a, they're quite a tight group. They've, they've gone through their players like Caroline who have been at the, the last World Cup, who know what it takes to get there to compete on a major European stage. I think... Arguably, the game has moved on, even since Scotland were in yeah. France in 2019, on what will be six years. I think there's been huge uh, leaps forward in terms of the standard of the women's game in that time. And I think it's important that you've got players who are playing in the Spanish league who know, who have exposure to the very top level of football all the time. And, Car and Emma Watson too, obviously struggling and maybe trying to force her way into a Manchester United team and, and be again exposed to a very, very good level, which has to be the standard then for the national team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking about the squad, Caroline Weir says that they're in a good place and they're ready for the qualifiers. Um, it feels like we're in a good place, uh, for sure. And yeah, we're ready. It does feel like we're more ready for these games. Um, unfortunately, you know, the last can be the Ireland game, like we've we've been through what it's like not to qualify so um, with that it's obviously difficult but it gives us more experience um, in these moments so yeah I feel like the, the squad, the team, the staff are all in a really good place. So Scotland knocked out of the playoffs last year after back-to-back -back major tournaments how do you think that they, they get themselves ready to go back into, into that sort of where they want to be competing at the highest level? Yeah, I think Caroline Weir touched on it at the press conference today when she mentioned that there were still echoes of that playoff defeat to the Republic of Ireland, who of course then went to Australia and went to the World Cup at Scotland's expense. I think that World Cup, being on the outside and looking in, would have been particularly painful for Scotland. I think they would have sensed they, they should have beaten Ireland. That night, Caroline, of course, missed a penalty in that game. It felt like a, a huge chance missed, and I think they've probably grieved that tournament as a squad together. I think... In recent months, you've seen a, a cohesion about this side. I think it was very, very important after what was a really bruising Nations League campaign. Caroline Muir suggested that she was absolutely devastated to miss the England game against Serena Wigman's side at Hamden. There's an argument to say she probably would have been delighted to miss that one. But I think since since those games and then to, to drop down a league, I think it's been beneficial to, to the squad. I think they have found their confidence. Again, they have then recovered ground, they've been scoring goals, they've looked a bit more fluent. I think these next playoffs, obviously if they come through the game against Hungary on Friday night and then Tuesday night's game at Easter Road, then next month in the beginning of December, then there is a final playoff leg. I think there is definitely a suggestion that you have to cope with the mental challenges of that as much as you have to cope with the game. But I think they look like a team who have a bit more about them just now. I think they look capable of going and getting them back, getting themselves back to a major tournament. And I think it can be so important, not just for Scotland in an international sense, but in a domestic sense too. I think that can be very important because there is a trickle-down effect every sense from grassroots all the way through and I think you need your national team playing and competing at major tournaments. Yeah and, and the buzz that it creates being at the, the major tournaments is so important as you said for grassroots and I think obviously they're at Easter Road, they want to get as many people as they can to Easter Road. Do you think Easter Road will be a better venue than Hamden? I think Pross, but just it's a, it's a bit tighter, it's like a, a smaller arena, I think it can be very dispiriting at times. I understand the optics of playing at Hamden. I can see the importance of playing games at the National Stadium, but I think when there are crowds of maybe, you know, five, six, seven thousand in a stadium that holds fifty thousand, it can feel feel very echoey, it can feel quiet. I think taking it to a smaller venue is sensible. I think um you want to generate as much atmosphere as possible. I think you want to to create a bit of noise and a bit of excitement about it. And of course you just want people to come along. You want to facilitate that. And if that means maybe touring the country, almost going to different grounds, then I think it's a sensible option. Yeah, well, two massive games for the Scotland squad and keeping everything crossed for both of them. Briefly, going to the weekend's action in the SWPL. A few changes, not really, I don't think some would have expected. We've got new league leaders, Glasgow City. What do you make of how the weekend played out? 
yeah, I, I think it's shaping up to be a very intriguing title race. I thought it was notable last year that Glasgow fi Glasgow City finished the campaign nine points behind Celtic and Rangers, who of course were tied on points with the title settled on goal difference. But I, I think there was a suspicion among some quarters that that might be the new standard within the, the women's league, that it might replicate what we see in the men's game that you have Celtic and Rangers almost vying for these two top spots I don't think that's how it's going to play out I think Glasgow City made changes off the park and on it over the summer I think they've been impressive they, they lost to Celtic earlier in the season I was at that game I thought they were they were unlucky I thought they deserved at least a draw in that game I think they look very much of the same standard of Celtic and Rangers I think I, I still think despite the fact that there's clearly clearly been progress from Hearts and Hibs I still think you'll have a top three and then Hearts and Hibs but what you're seeing already is that the two Edinburgh teams are going to take points off the top three whether or not they can sustain that challenge across the course of the campaign is another matter when it comes to depth and resources but they're good enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in a one-off game you've seen Hearts beat Celtic this season and that's Hibs have now taken points off of Celtic and of Rangers. I think it's set up to be a really intriguing title contest and that's what we want. We want to keep it tight, we want it to be as exciting as possible. We've seen some photo finishes across recent seasons and I think you want to, you want to see that again. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Alison McConnell. I've been Cara Henderson. We'll see you next week at Easter Road. Right slap bam in the middle of the hungry fixtures. See you next time.